guys, Ed Solis from Heroes Martial Arts here in San Jose, California. Today we're going to be talking about uh, another type of attack or leg attack. Now, when people think about attacking somebody's legs, they think of your standard double leg shot or your, your, your single leg shot. Kind of scares people in jiu-jitsu because they don't necessarily want to get below their opponent or underneath their opponent um, because of the attacks that are possible. So today I'm going to show you a really cool technique to basically snag a single leg. Uh, and that's going to be, you're going to be able to pick up the leg without actually shooting down to your knees or getting too far below your opponent. Okay, and a couple of things that we're going to have to do to pick up that leg. One of the things you have to understand about the technique or the, or the mechanics of takedowns is the way your opponent reacts. Okay, so for example, if you want to attack the right leg, you need to circle to the left to get that right leg to step up, vice versa. If you want someone to step towards you, you've got to back up to make them chase you. If you want them to back up, you have to go towards them and so forth. So, taking that into account, I'm going to show you basically how to set up the attack for that single leg. I'm going to show you the penetration you need, and I'm going to show you how to finish it and to control that single leg. What I try to teach my, my uh, students here at Hills Martial Arts is that you don't want to expend a whole lot of energy and get zero points out of it, okay? If you're going to attack somebody, you want to attack them with a high level takedown, and you want to finish to get your points. You always want to end up in side control, north south, you always want to end up on their back, and that's kind of the philosophy that we teach here. So, today, let's talk about a snag, a snag single. Okay, so let's talk about when we're on our feet. Okay, whenever we reach for our opponent, we're always exposing ourselves. And what do I mean by that? Somebody has to reach for the other guy, okay? And when we stick out our arm, if our elbows are high, we open ourselves up for an attack, okay? So, we always want to keep our elbows in. When we reach for our opponent, we want to be short, quick, and concise, okay? So when I grab the lapel, I want to reach out almost like a jab, okay? And I want to catch this lapel. Now you have to watch out, okay? You've got to watch your own lapel, you've got to watch your own sleeve. Okay? If Dino grabs onto my lapel, and I grab onto his sleeve, and he grabs onto my sleeve, then we're kind of equal right here, okay? and then we go into the dance. What I like to do is I like to reach up to the lapel and quickly grab the sleeve. Okay? Now I'm in control. Okay? A standard lapel grip like you would do in judo, sleeve grip. Okay? You can pistol grip, you can do whatever you like. But basically from here, I want to start to attack my opponent. I want to start controlling him. I don't want him to counter, I don't want to break my grip. Okay? I'm going to start getting this guy to move. Now, when we're going to go for a stag single, we're going to go for the single of the side that we're controlling the sleeve on. So, for example, I'm controlling Dino's right arm, I want to pick up his right leg. If you're left-handed, you switch the technique. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we're going to get this guy to react. Okay, we're going to control his upper body with his lapel and with his sleeve. At the same time, I need that leg to step up. I can't reach it from here. So, I need to get Dino to step toward me in a certain way. One of my favorite ways of making my opponent step to me is by shuffling my, my feet or crow hopping. And I'll show you a little more advanced uh, look at my feet later on, but I'm going to do kind of the basics right now, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hop my feet, kind of crow hop. I'm just going to replace my left leg with my right leg, okay? And I'm going to do a little shuffle move. As I do this move, I'm going to power down on, on Dino's sleeve and lapel. I'm going to pull him towards me. And as you notice, his leg's going to step up, okay? One more time. We're here, shuffle step or crow hop, and I give him a good yank. That leg's going to come up. Now I'm controlling his sleeve. All I have to do from here is let go and simply grab onto his gi pad, okay? But I want to do a little bit more than that. I actually want to step and change my direction. So from here, we're going to do a short crow hop. We're going to pull him. Now I'm going to change my direction and come back towards his leg, okay? As I do that, I'm going to change my level, okay? Boom, right here. Boom, right here. You always want to keep your head up. Again, we talked in another series about keeping our head down when we're uh, participate in a fighting in jiu-jitsu. That's, that's a big no-no. It's going to get you choked. Okay? So once again, crow hop. Yay! Switch our levels. Now, I like to keep my forehead right in Dino's chest right here. My head's safe. Okay? It's not to the outside where it's going to get caught. It's straight up. Even if Dino wanted to catch my head right now, it's impossible. My head's up. I'm in a good position. Okay? I step, change my level. I start driving towards him. And I'm going to control this knee. Okay? Just like hiking a football. You're going to pull it right up in between your legs. Now, one of the most important things you have to remember right here is that you have to pinch your knees together. You've got to control this guy's thigh or, or his calf. And you want to keep your head up, okay? That keeps him off balance. That keeps me in a good position to attack him, okay? If my knees come apart, his leg comes out, he pushes me away, wizards me, gets his leg down. So you've got to pinch those knees. One more time. Good lapel grip, good sleeve grip, curl hop, pull. Change directions. Head to the chest, drive up, pinch with the knees. Okay, now you're ready to finish. 
Okay, I'm going to show a really uh, high percentage finish here, but it's also very explosive and it's dangerous. Okay, so what I always tell folks, whenever we train, whether you're in jiu-jitsu, you're in wrestling, or you're in judo, whenever you lift your opponent, you're responsible for their safety. Okay, obviously this is a very tough sport, it's a, it's a combative sport, but we always have respect for our opponent, especially our training partners, we don't want to hurt anybody. So before I show you the move, I want to let you know that this move should be practiced with safety in mind, okay? So whenever you practice this move, you make sure you're on a mat, make sure you're in a, a controlled environment, and if you can, practice with a judo instructor or a wrestling instructor so that you're safe. If you have a crash pad, bring it out, uh, but always make sure that you're being safe with your partner. When you lift your partner, you're responsible for bringing them down to the mat. Furthermore, when you're competing in jiu-jitsu, if you over-rotate this move and drop your opponent on his head or you spike him on his head, you're disqualified, and uh, more importantly, your opponent can get seriously hurt, okay? So, with that said, this is a very explosive technique. It's a, it's a great takedown, a great finish. It's gonna put you right in the side control, but you gotta do it with a level of, of caution, okay? So, single leg finish. We're always pinching with our knees, okay? We're controlling the leg, controlling the thigh. My head is always up, okay? I have my head into, his, his, into Dino's ribs. Now, the reason I like to look in the ribs, it kinda keeps him off balance, okay? If I have my head down, he's able to punch over me and attack my head. Yeah, I don't want that. I always want to keep it up. Now, two things that we're going to do here. We're going to switch our inside hand and our inside leg, okay, by stepping back. As I step back, I'm going to replace my leg that's pinching with my inside hand, okay? You don't want to switch your palms, okay? You just want to switch straight back here, and you want to control their ankle, okay? A lot of people make the mistake of bringing their leg back without their hand. This guy kicks his leg out. You lose the leg. You get zero points, okay? So the hand transfer's got to be just as you step back. You want to move the hand back. Here, okay? Here. Now, as I slide my hand back, I'm going to continue, just like a golf swing or, or a baseball swing. I'm going to continue through this motion. What I want to do is I want to attempt to put my opponent's foot through the ceiling, okay? At the same time, I'm going to be looking up, I'm going to sweep his foot out. Now, here's where the safety comes in when you practice, guys. Your partner should put his hand around your neck, okay? Because basically, this guy's going to land flat on his back. So one more time. We're about to drill it. Dino puts his hand on my neck, okay? I'm gonna step back, inside hand, inside leg switch places. I'm gonna instantly pull. Your opponent lands straight down in front of you into your side control, okay? So obviously in a match, your opponent's not holding your, your, your neck. They're gonna fly out from underneath, or they're gonna fly right down in front of you, so you gotta be careful with the control. Okay, one more time. Single leg. We step back. Now the way you can really ruin this move is by doing this. Okay, if you pick it up slow, that's what the guy's gonna do. He's gonna balance, he's gonna bounce away, and you're gonna miss the takedown. If the guy's really flexible, he's gonna do a flying triangle on you or something crazy, okay? So you always wanna make sure you're explosive with this. So you're here, here. Cover him up. Okay, so here's the whole technique. Good lapel grip, good sleeve grip. Curl hop, pull, change levels, single leg. Sweep them out to their back side control. All right, guys. So there's a couple of different things you want to talk about when we're doing our footwork. Okay, it's a lot faster to crow hop and get an angle on your opponent, get that distance covered with one step. What a lot of people do is they tend to shuffle their feet. Okay, by the time you do that. Your opponent's already facing you. Okay, stay square. So a quick crow hop. Remember, you're just gonna you're just gonna replace your left foot with your right foot by balancing. Okay, it's like a little teeter totter position. Okay, when you learn to do this, you're gonna cover a lot more step, a lot more area with one step. Here, here. Okay, same thing here. Covers a lot of space. So here's a drill you can do on your own. You just stand with your hands out and you just do this. Okay. And that's really going to help your balance, and it's going to help you get that step for getting an angle on your opponent. All right, guys, so to recap our skill for today, whenever we reach for our opponent, we're exposing ourselves. So whenever you reach for a lapel, a sleeve, or a shoulder, or to control somebody's neck with a collar tie, make sure you do it quick and concise, okay? You always want to keep your elbow in. You never want to reach with your elbow straight out. It opens you up for an attack. As soon as you establish your grips, you want to start to move your opponent around. You want to control their upper body, your wrist, and you want to start getting your feet going. You want to start to lead that dance. Remember to crow hop. Practice that crow hop on your own. 
It really cuts the angle, it gets your opponent moving a lot faster, and when you start working the snap with changing your feet, it'll have to, it'll start bringing that foot up really quick. Your opponent will start stepping up and start timing it. You don't necessarily have to attack them on the first try. You can do it a couple times, circle, circle, and then attack. As you reach for that, that single leg, okay, you can either grab the pant leg or you can reach right behind the leg if you're doing no gi, okay? But you remember, you wanna slightly change your level when you attack back the leg. As soon as you bring that leg up, you wanna bring it up between your legs and you wanna pinch with your knee. Pinching with your knee is gonna keep you at a higher level of takedown. If you, if you can't keep your knees pinched, you're gonna lose that leg, okay? It's gonna to come to the outside and you're gonna do a lot of work for nothing. So remember practicing when you scoop that leg up, you wanna pinch with your knees nice and tight, okay? To finish, always keep your head up. You never wanna look down at the mat because you're at risk for getting your head caught. You always wanna keep your head up. My, my rule of thumb is to always look into their chest or into their pec muscles, okay? That keeps your head up, keeps you safe. When you go to finish the, the move, your leg and your hand have to switch places simultaneously. And just like a golf swing, you wanna follow all the way through, okay? You don't wanna stop. So as you train this move, you wanna move that leg and that hand simultaneously. You wanna to continue to sweep all the way through. Always remember safety. Your partner should put their hand around your neck and when you sweep them out, especially in the training room, you wanna take it easy. When you're competing, always remember, as soon as you feel the force of their foot come off the mat, which is to feel that they get instantly lighter, that's where you stop your rotation, bring them down right in front of you into side control, okay? Always be safe, always be careful. So check us out on the web at heroesmartialarts.com. You can also visit Dino's website at vqspinesport.com. As I mentioned before, my name is Dino Del Mastro. I'm also a doctor of chiropractic specializing in sports therapy. So find me on the web or check me out on Facebook. Any questions you guys have about injuries, wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, I'd love to be there to help you guys out. And you can always check us out at Takedowns for BJJ on Facebook. Send me a message, send me any questions you might have. Good luck in your training, we'll see you soon.